Welcome back to another episode of the RAG Report podcast, my daily bulletin show where I bring to you recruitment owners, advisors, suppliers, even investors to the global recruitment industry and talk about what's going on in the world right now. Like what's, go- what's hitting our sector right now through from the latest news, COVID-19 and everything in between. Um, today, I'm really excited to be joined by James Weiser, the founding director of Rural Recruitment. Rule, if you don't know them, are a rec to rec based down in Wimbledon, I believe, in South London. Um, and uh, a business I've worked with in the past, um, recruited through when I was a recruiter, and I've worked, uh, done some content with recently as well, which uh, uh, was, it was great fun. Um, and uh, I, mean, look, I, I was keen to speak to James because as a rec to rec, he's, he's ears to the ground, he's speaking to people all over the market. So, really interested to find out what he's been up to and how he sees uh, the current market conditions today. Before I do, I wanted to just make, mention our sponsor, which is Rise Recruitment Ventures. Rise are led by Alex Elliott and Jonathan Coxon, two uh, founders of Liquid Personnel. In 2006, they, they launched a business basically out of their flat that they shared in Manchester, and 10 years later sold for over 20 million. They had 140 man staff, over 100 million turnover. Um, and now, after a few years out of uh, living a certain lifestyle, shall we say, have launched a, an investment business where they're looking to help the next generation scale and exit. So they want to work with founders or soon to be founders of recruitment businesses who are looking for that big scale and exit plan. Um, if you think you're that type of person, but you'd benefit from potentially capital expertise and, and having real weight behind you, then get in touch. And if you, if you want to do that, go on their website and uh, have a look at www.riserv.co.uk. James, welcome to the RAG Report. Thanks, mate. Good to see you. Yeah, it's, uh, we've been talking about this for a while. When you came in the office in... Uh, when did you come in the office? Was it like February just before? It, wasn't it, it was about, yeah, it would have been around about Feb time. So, uh, yeah, it's been yeah. something I've been keen to do for a while. Yeah, we talked about it. Um, you came in and shot a video of, of the Hoxo HQ, which soon won't be the Hoxo HQ. I was just telling you uh, off air that we, uh, we've we handed in our notice in the office due to the way that we got burgled and the way that it was dealt with. And, uh, you know, we're moving. So that video, when it gets released, will be, uh, <laughs> be a bit... It'll be, one, one, it'll be outdated. Two, it'll be a bit sentimental for me. I, I know. I filmed a few prior to you as well. I mean, we did Son of Eight down in Cardiff and there was a Christmas tree. So if we prolong this until the end of the year, we'd be back about kind of the right season for it. But um, obviously, we don't want to kind of release that content. We invested quite a lot in it and to kind of do it now when no one's really paying that much attention to it. It seems a bit of a waste of time. So perhaps save it for a brighter day. Uh, do you know what? It'd be great to watch it back in, in a few years when uh, my dog's about twice the size he was on that video as well. He's, he's a right star little... of the show. He was, wasn't he? Um, well, James, look, most people know who you are, but just do us a favor. Tell us who you are and what you do. So I um, run Rural uh, Rec to Rec. I've uh, been in the Rec to Rec industry for about 16 years. Um, prior to Rural, was at another agency for 11 years. Um, we pr- primarily kind of deliver uh, into London, although we deliver on a global basis. Um, a lot of our business focus at the kind of junior trainee end. Although, you know, we do kind of go all the way up to CO, really. Um, I mean, me personally focus much more at the senior level, which I really enjoy. Yeah, um, yeah so, you know, um, we deliver across both the contingent and the ex- exact search market. So, got a pretty good pulse, you know, take on what's happening in the market at the moment. Um, yeah, so. You remember you placed... Diego Baines with me back in the day. Diego. I, I do, yeah. He's, I wonder um, if he's still listening. He's over at DVF now. He works for... Uh, he I he did. He went he to Empiric worked. afterwards, I think, and then he went to DVF. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah. he's working for, working for my old colleague, Anthony Webster, who was at Venquist at the time. Good luck. Hope they're doing well. Um, well, he, yeah, he, I remember. Joined of you, and he joined because of you, and then he uh, told me as he started that you had left. So. <laughs> I left. Yeah, the poor, the poor boy was sat next to me getting all excited, and I, I knew I was leaving, obviously, even then. But I... I thought he was good enough, so I, I kept kept such. Like, we really worked closely together, but yeah, I left at the end of January and definitely didn't help the boy. So if you're listening, Diego, I'm sorry about that. Um, but uh, no, I, I enjoyed the the, the the engagement with you as well. Um, but look, James, I I, I want to find out like I do with everyone. And the first question I ask is, what the hell is your life like? Can you paint that picture? I know you're in your office in your shorts and shirt right now, but give us. Give us a bigger picture of your personal life right now. Yeah, sure. It was a t-shirt half an hour before I uh, p- picked the phone to you. So uh, I thought I'd try and dress Debbie smart. Uh, look, my life has been fairly chaotic. It's been a bit of a roller coaster. And it's actually been such a long time since this began. I've kind of forgot what happened at the beginning. But look, essentially when this happened, uh, I've got two small children. So 
uh, just made the conscious decision to kind of almost step away from the business and for kind of like three, four, three weeks. And basically, you know, we just, we just hung around as a family. My business partner and wife, uh, Morag, was dealing with the kind of financial side of the business and, you know, getting scripts of furlough and, you know, making sure she was communicating what we were doing for the staff. So I was kind of, you know, playing dad at home and I actually really enjoyed it. Um, and, you know, when I wasn't playing dad in the few hours I did have, um, I just spent my time um, speaking to my clients, finding out what was going on, just on a human level. I wasn't kind of saying, well, you've got any you know, hiring or this, that. I wasn't really that bothered. I knew the answer would probably be no. You know, most firms yeah. are trying to get their own house in order. If I'm honest, I wasn't taking any calls from candidates because, you know, whilst a lot of the market was kind of whipping themselves into friends about how many people in the market, if I'm honest, I knew my clients wouldn't pay me for those kind of people that were in the market at the time. Okay. Um, and then roll on a few, a few more weeks. Um, you know, luckily we were able to have a nanny back and that's made a massive difference to, to us both, which means that I've started coming to work every day and I'm in the office from, you know, eight o'clock and I'm leaving at six and taking a yeah, you know, full it, shift. You share the business with your wife, right? She's, she's that's right, yeah. Business. Yeah, so she the recruiter as well. No, she does the operations. Um, right. Although she she got a few interviews going on, she's kind of getting back into it. Because when we first did the business up, we were both you know two hands, yeah. you know, both hands to the pump and recruiting. And uh, her not coming from a um, recruitment background, it was uh, it was a weird you know journey for her. But now she's been around the business, she knows how it works. So um, she's kind of you know, putting her hands to the pump and trying to get some candidates over the line as well. So has this been a, an, an additional test, would you say, for you guys? Because most of our relationships have been thrust into this kind of like lockdown, seeing each other all the time. You, are, you, are you guys kind of used to no. that, but this is, this is added any extra stress? Or? It's, made us, it's made us stronger, I think. I mean, kind of the whole family unit, you know. I mean, I like having a drink at the weekends. I like going out for dinners and... You know, that often involves drinking too much, coming home late. And because that, none of that's been going on, I, I've been sleeping lots. Um, so I've also been doing a lot more exercise because, you know, before this, I'd drop my daughter off at school, drive to the office, and I'd go home. And, you know, so my kind of like just mental well-being and health took a massive backward step. And I think just being a lot more just, um, just fit, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't describe myself as fit, but just being, you know, kind of more physical and active and, not drinking as much and sleeping better. It's just given me a much kind of, I don't know, I've been able to step back and just look at it for what it is. Um, I've also been through 2008 as well. So having yeah. done that, that gives me an enormous amount of confidence about what we're going through at the moment. Um, you know, we're a fairly, you know, for a small business, we're fairly cash rich. I'm not panicking about going under. It's, you know, it's frustrating and it's a, you know, it's, it's a glitch, but in fact, I was telling Morag that we really needed a recession a few months ago. I didn't have a global pandemic in mind. But the problem was the market was just too saturated. It was just, it was just, it was getting really, really tough to recruit into. And I kind of think this is going to do some, you know, positive, you know, realignment. Would you, what, can you just elaborate on that? Like, surely, the obvious thing in my head is like, when the market's busy and saturated, there's agencies everywhere. That's great for you. But what? It is. I mean, everyone was looking, but we were at a point where there just weren't the level of candidates that people wanted. Right. Um, I mean, you know, people's expectations for what they wanted and what was available in mass just didn't match up. Um, yeah, of course, you can make spot placements, but you know, as a recruiter, if you've got 30 roles, you want to fill them all. Um, whereas we were in a situation where we had you know, a few hundred roles and you know, it didn't get anywhere near to filling them all. Um, so I, we just needed the kind of, you know, it's still, a, still to a degree a candidate saturated market at the moment, um, you know, client as well. But um, I definitely see it being a positive going to next year. Okay. So how have you seen the conversation and appetite from your client base changed in the last say since the last two or three weeks since we've relaxed a little bit of the lockdown yeah dramatically um so look, first first few weeks i had you know a number of clients saying look we were looking you know there was that kind of unicorn that walked through the door they probably would have um you know gone to hire um you know we've made a few deals in lockdown it's nothing to get excited about um but the last two weeks uh, there's been a significant increase in appetite um I mean, me personally, I've got 13 candidates out interviewing. Most of those candidates got several opportunities. So I've got the best part of 40 interviews happening this week. Um, and, and, you know, I look back to kind of three weeks ago and if I'd had, you know, two candidates and four or five interviews, I would have been really stoked. Um, so, yeah, it's seeing a big, big increase. But I suppose I'm not getting too excited yet because I need to identify which kind of clients are serious about hiring and which clients are just kind of like, you know, having a look, being seen to be, you know, active because... So much is about, um, you know, so, so many people worried about what the perception is in the marketplace and therefore they want to be seen as that company that are hiring. Um, 
So it's, it's kind of just, uh, you know, me identifying which firms are serious at the moment, which firms are What's that, What level of talent are the interesting? Because obviously, as a, I know you do a lot of graduates <clears> and, re- and yeah. trainees. Uh, that, that's the area I'm a bit fearful for uh, as a, in, in the future. Just, I just think if, if we all lean down, which are, the signs are showing most people are, are leaning down and they're probably going to stay like that for a while at least. You know, are you going to really want to train new people, or are you going to? If, and if there's all this talent being made redundant, <clears throat> uh, are you going to go for someone who's got a year or two, or are you going to go for a, a trainee? Yeah. What, what do you reckon? I mean, most of my clients are kind of looking at people who you can plug and play. You know, take someone from this vertical, put them back into exactly the same vertical, and they're self-sufficient. Three hundred and sixty recruiters doing two hundred grand a year. Brilliant, easy. Um, you know, people who are kind of really struggling in this market. Anyone who's doing cap management, delivery, people who can't kind of win for themselves. In terms of the grab market, yeah, look, it's been hit badly. It's been hit badly. Um, no qualms about that. But in terms of a lot of these firms adjusting their, you know, the way they work, so many firms are built on just hiring graduates. I mean, if you look at S3, until relatively recently, you know, given their length of, you know, kind of history, they've only ever hired graduates. There are lots of other firms that do that. So suddenly you need to start going out there and uh, attracting senior people. They've got to adjust the whole way they work, the model, the training, just get your head around the whole base salaries that you need to pay. So I think as things pick up, people will start hiring grads again. And that's what happened in kind of 2008 all the way through to 10. Um, but the difference is, is you suddenly got candidates in the market that weren't available, you know, six, seven months ago because other markets, you know, have been hit really hard. I mean, I think I read the other day, I think it was Deloitte, uh, it could be one of the other big four, but they've cancelled all um, hires this year for their kind of graduate hire, graduate intake. And, you know, it's those people who will look and think, well, I can't get my you know, primary job um, and therefore they look at other opportunities like recruitment. So I think recruitment next year will probably be fairly busy on the grad side, but certainly for the rest of this year, I don't think there'll be much grad hiring going on. Although we have placed a couple, but um, yeah, but, you know, normally we're placing like 30 a month. It's, uh, it's not much. So, you, so you're going to stick to your, your the, the more <clears throat> that you say that two to, <clears throat> to three year recruiter really? That's, yeah, that's... No, I've, got, I've got some really senior you know, people interviewing as well who are you know, kind of being considered to go and set up divisions for businesses. And I think, you know, if you're cash rich and you've got somebody knocking on the door saying, look, I work in a market or a sector or a vertical that you don't work in, I can build this. You know, the best time to build something is in the downturn. Um, I 100% know that if somebody knocks on our door who does sales recruitment and they were good, we would hire them now. So lots of my clients are saying that. But largely as a business, we will be delivering those kind of recruiters with probably more like two to four years experience. Just, just billers. Um, yeah. Just billers. A quick interruption of the episode to bring to you a message from our second sponsor, which is Odro. Odro, as most of you probably know, is the world's most powerful all-in-one video interview platform for recruiters. Used by thousands of recruiters worldwide and with some of the industry's biggest names amongst its client base, Odro is a video interview platform. It was developed specifically to help agencies increase their revenues. The most innovative solution on the market, Odro's software helps recruiters to engage more talent, reduce time to hire, and most importantly, it helps you win business. You'll even get the ROI back from investing in Odro within just 45 days. It's designed to benefit everyone in the process. So from recruiters to clients to candidates, Odro's platform is improving the hiring process one interview at a time. We chose to partner with Odro because we felt like both brands, Hoxo and Odro, were in such a clear alignment in the way that we approach everything we do and how passionate we are about helping this industry grow. If you want to find out more about how Odro can help your agency transform its process and win more business, win exclusivity and drive revenue, then click the link on the podcast notes and every social post that goes out and they will, you will get a call back by one of the Odro guys. They're, they are awesome and I'm sure they'll be able to offer some amazing value to your business. Thanks for listening. Let's get back to the show. What do you think of the <clears throat> um, the situation we're facing? So, you know, furlough, furlough's been a huge saving grace, I think, for, for my business massively. I mean, I know, for, I, I know for a fact that, you know, people are investing in marketing and branding because <clears throat> they have been able to for, forego that, that, that staff cost on, 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 the, on the front. Um, but that's not going to last forever. And we're talking about October, but there's also talk that at the end of July or end, and end of June, there's going to be new rules around, you know, employers being made to pay 25% or whatever. <clears throat> what do you think? Are we, are, we, are we facing a huge mass redundancy of, of people yeah, that have been on furlough? 
Yeah, I, I mean, I predicted this in one of my kind of LinkedIn posts several weeks ago that, you know, I think there are going to be massive numbers of companies in the recruitment sector who go under. I, I think <clears throat> so many kind of companies were, you know, um, it was all about size, headcount. It, it was so important for them. So, you know, whilst they perhaps had, you know, impressive revenue, cash flow and you know, profit wasn't that good. Uh, and, you know, if you haven't had staff billing for the last three, four months, you know, your rent is still been accruing. You know, you've got to pay that. And we all know that when you come back straight away, there's not going to be endless amounts of business. And even if you do make a placement, you're not going to get paid for several months on that. And it's not banked and safe, you know, for a few months more. So, um, yeah, without doubt, there's going to be some firms that go under. And I kind of think with the furlough scheme, look, it saved, you know, saved us to a degree as well. And, you know, we could have ridden the storm, but it would have taken, it would have taken a massive financial hit. And it's been, it's been a great initiative. But I kind of think that, you know, just prolonging it, is making the inevitable just it's just drawing out which i think is unfair on the candidate uh, as well and sometimes being made to make those difficult decisions a lot of my clients are saying look we will make these people redundant but they, they're almost wishing they do it now it's only because they can help out people that they're doing so yeah what about working processes big obviously we've we've, we've changed everything like that it's crazy <clears throat> um i know businesses that didn't even have laptops before and now they're now they're having to run remote businesses yeah. and actually on the whole my understanding from conversation has been it's, it's, it's gone down well. I mean, I know a few clients, uh, one of them won't, won't mind me saying, a guy, Tony Camasotti, I had on here, he runs Granite Search. He, he's so adamant he can't wait to go back to work. He's just like, he hates it. He calls himself, he said, fuck being a nomad was the words he said to me. And I thought it was hilarious. But, um, and I love the fact that he's so direct about it. But on the whole, I've, I felt like people have enjoyed parts of this. And especially... If I, if I look at my life now, 33, almost 34, got a wife, dog, you know, I haven't got a child, but a lot of people around my age would have a young family. And, you know, would I really want to go back now to commute into London at the same time every five days a week? I don't know. I, the answer is point blank no. Um, I reckon there's going to be a lot of people that agree with that. What, what do you think? Well, how are we going to evolve in terms of the way we work? I think, look, I, I, think, I think the recruitment sector is so diverse in terms of market sectors, you know, the way people work, you know, um, ages, just everything. And I, I mean, I'm speaking to a lot of candidates at the moment and because, you know, I'm tend to be speaking to slightly, you know, more mature candidates because they've got more experience. Mm -hmm. They're very much wanting to get back to the office. They think they're much more productive. It's impossible to work around a small family. I mean, interestingly enough, uh, just as a kind of thing I've noticed that, those in London are the far keenest to kind of get back. And it's perhaps because, you know, with property prices so expensive, they don't have a, you know, spare bedroom to have an office. Uh, and, and therefore London, you know, Londoners aren't perhaps as set up um, to kind of work from home. I think in saying that, I have spoken to a few junior people and I've spoken to them about opportunities working remotely. And, and this is kind of like ongoing. This will be kind of their, their job. And they're really fearful of, you know, what it means from a kind of cultural, you know, perspective. I mean, look, I, I tap recruiters up all day long, you know, who work in environments where they don't get well paid, poor basics, poor commission, KPIs, made to work 12 hours. And it's no brainer that they should not be working in the agency. But yet they don't leave because they're so bought in uh, to, to the people they work with. They're really loyal. And I, I think that's, you know, um, a big factor. I think you will see an element of flexibility. So perhaps recruiters not working in the office 12 hours a day. I think people like myself who are parents, you know, you know they've enjoyed having bit of extra time with the children so perhaps they'll get in at like 9 30 and perhaps they leave at four but they make the hours up elsewhere so rather than having a pure remote working system i think there'll be a bit more flexibility in terms of the hours and i don't think recruiters will probably work as long hours if I'm honest yeah i like i think that's a really sensible approach to it do you think there'll be mm. how will that evolve your decision the way you're going to go at the market though because surely this is going to create movement like even the people that aren't furloughed or redundant there's going to be some that when when the way the way the business reacts, they won't agree. Like they, they'll either it'll be too relaxed, and they'll be like, "I don't really want to be so far, like it's so remote. I want to get back." So I'm gonna, or they'll be the other way that you know I'm. You're making me get on a train at the time. I don't want. I'm used to my morning routine. Yeah. I'm used to taking, bre having breakfast with my kids, and you're not letting me do that. So what? How are you gonna? Or how do you think that'll create movement? I mean, we're already seeing a fair bit of movement just when candidates are on furlough who are kind of saying, look, I'm really pissed off with it, you know, the way my kind of boss or, you know, employers dealt with, dealt with it or actually, you know, now having realised that I've taken a step away from my colleagues, you know, 
actually how much I earn or you know the way I'm treated, the amount of hours of work is really important. So they are kind of tip the turn the water. I think what we need to do is just make sure we've got clients that kind of offer, you know, this for that candidate that wants this and that for this candidate that wants that basically, just making sure you've got an offering for everybody. Um, I mean, but you know, some of our search clients, for example, I mean, I, I've spoken to a few people who said some of the search clients believe they're in real trouble because you know, being able to meet people um, is you know fundamental to the way they conduct their business. It's all about networking, getting to know people on a face-to-face kind of level, and that's not happening. Um, so yeah, I think there was, there'll be a bit of both. There'll be you know there'll be options for candidates. There'll be probably more options than there were previously. Have you seen? any obvious sectors that are still have been pumping juniors or whatever like for example healthcare recruiters come to mind that they'd probably still be snapping up talent if they're getting busier have you seen it is, is it been how you not so much imagine? the junior end not so much the junior end but yeah it, it's, it, yeah the, the the most resilient markets without doubt are technology life sciences accountancy and finance is showing a bit of a kind of comeback you know fundamentally a lot of our clients are saying look you still need an accountant you still need this you still need a lawyer People, people are still hiring, but the difference is they're just hiring really good candidates. And I think that's going to be one of the biggest adjustments is kind of just the level of um, candidate that people take on. Um, I mean, as, a, as any recruiter, whether you're in finance, rec to rec, technology recruiter, your client's going to demand so much more of you from a kind of like quality point of view, I think. What I'm thinking is just the, 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 there's going to be certain sectors, though, where... <clears throat> they're just not going to turn around fast enough. Like they're going to be, they're going to be really slow to, to react to, to hire again. And as an owner, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I think this a lot. Do you pivot? Do you keep your team lean? Do you wait it out? What, 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 if you're one of those unfortunate sectors that aren't church, but for example, if you're in events or hospitality, yeah. you're completely at mercy to the government. You have got no ability to yeah. impact it in that. But- it, do you know what I mean? It's crazy. Yeah, but, 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 how do you, but how do you pivot? I mean, look, we're really lucky. I've got 16 years of rec to rec experience and therefore I've got a really decent client base. If I was working in sales recruitment, for example, and that is kind of just shut off and I wanted to move into rec to rec, it's going to be really difficult to break into those clients. Mm-hmm. So breaking into new markets at the moment, especially if you're, I mean, again, it comes down to the size company you are. You know, if you're leaner, you're going to be much more agile. If you're, you know, a, a business that's built around processes that, a cater to deliver into banks, for example, you're not probably going to be able to pivot and then suddenly start delivering into SaaS businesses. It's mm-hmm. just a completely different way of working. Um, so, and I think it would be a lot more difficult unless there's a really close synergy um, to, to what you're doing uh, compared to the market you're looking to move in. So, how how have you managed the business? How has how has Rule been affected in the last? Uh, well, what is it? Three months, two and a half months. Yeah. So look, it, it, the first the first few months, mate, were pretty dire. If I'm honest, and you know, I knew that was the case, and so I didn't really stress about it. I said we got money in the bank. It, you know, it, it was inevitable. It was going to be difficult. Um, so, you know, we kind of just got on and swallowed it. We, you know, we with the whole furlough scheme, we've made our kind of business fairly lean from a kind of finance point of view. Um, and then going forwards, you know, and, and to, to today, it's really picking up. You know, we've made a few deals, you know, we might even sort of nudge into profit this month, probably we will do, which would be good. Um, you know, it's, it's nothing to get excited about yet, but it's all kind of grass shoots. And I think that's kind of what you've got to look at as recruiters. Um, you know, there's too much negativity out there. And I think personally, if you're, you know, I, I stopped watching the news, for example, because it, yeah. you know reading about so, negative this and negative that negative this it just puts you know as a recruiter you need to be optimistic if you're optimistic you make things happen oh 100 so. percent. do you know what the i've 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 launched the hoxo academy which i'm uh, mentioned to you before and uh, as a result <clears> of it i've launched a facebook community and we've got so i've got 60 recruitment owners in there at the moment and it's it's, it's popping off like there's so much going on everyone's asking questions everyone's talking about ideas for content and I'm giving feedback and it's been brilliant but what it's done is it's took me back to Facebook which is an app I deleted about a year ago um, and I've, I've just got into I don't know what I've done but I've clicked on a couple of Donald Trump like videos which I now get every time I go in I'm just hammered with a news feed of like Donald Trump videos and uh it ain't good for the brain mate like it's not if you no. spend you can lose half an hour watching three videos about what's going on in the US or whatever. And, and you, you automatically like lower in terms of your emotional state. Than you yeah. Before. Yeah. You need to listen to what's in front of you, you know, listen to what your clients are saying. I don't, you know, I don't need to listen to polls that we're going to hit a recession. It's like, well, of course we're going to hit a recession. No one's been in you know, work for the last two months. It's pretty obvious, but my clients say they're hiring. Therefore that's good. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. So have you, uh, have you thought about how you're going to operate as a business post like COVID and post lockdown? Yeah, look, be, be, we're fairly lucky um, being out in Wimbledon. It's fairly easy for our guys to commute. And actually we've spoken to them and they're, they're really struggling working from home um, and they're looking to come back. I mean, again, we've got a pretty sizable office and therefore kind of, you know, spreading people out throughout the office is not difficult for us. Um, but we have, you know, said if you're not comfortable coming to work, then, you know, stay at home. Um, we, you know, I think everyone's kind of got the remote um, working, you know, down to, not I wouldn't say a T, but they're, they're, at least they're used to it now. So we're prepared to be flexible. I think you've just got to kind of, you know, see how it goes, evolve, you know, see what issues, you know, arise and then try and, you know, adjust those really quickly to make sure it just runs smoother. Yeah. James, one final question I want to know from you, which is, uh, I've asked a few people this, is what have you learned the most about yourself in lockdown? Like it's been a period that we none of us predicted, <clears throat> but I think it's been a period of self reflection for a lot of us. What have you learned about yourself? I think for, for me, um, having the kind of um, confidence to sorry, have, have, sorry, can you see me? Yeah. Um, having, having the confidence to just get on with it and not be too phased by it. I just think just being that little bit more mature, having been through this before gives me, you know, a, a lot of confidence. But for, for me, what I'm going to take away from it most is just kind of how much it's given back to my family. You know, I think, you know, especially when you live in a city like London, you can just be so here, there, you know, you kind of don't really focus on, you know, the, what should be the important times. And you know, every night we go up to the common of Wimbledon and kick a ball around as a family and, for me, that's just kind of highlighted what is actually really important. Um, you know, work is a by you know, work facilitates all of that happening. But, I, I, you know, coming out of this, I want to make sure that that is our kind of like my main priority. Um, it so, will be, uh, yeah, 100%. It will be nice when the restaurants and bars open, all right? Yeah, that, that will be good, mate. Yeah, I've missed the pint. <laughs> well, I've, I've not drank in 60 days today. Um, and wow. I've, uh, I've, I've trained loads. I've not drank, I've not eaten any junk food, not had a piece of chocolate, 60 days. And I've, it ends on the Saturday, the 13th of June. And I'm hoping that there's like a change in lockdown on the 15th or whatever that weekend where, I don't know, beer gardens might open or something. I don't think they will. I think it's July that, at the earliest, but it'd be nice to, I'm, yeah. I'm planning on, the plan is to run from my flat to Trafalgar Square on that day. It's two, it'd be about two and a half hours, I think 12 miles. I'm, I'm a crap runner, so I'll do it slow, but um, trot my way there in the morning slowly. And then my wife will drive down with the dog and a lot of beers. And then, uh, Somewhere near Trafalgar, will spot another stop and have a drink. That sounds pretty ideal, mate. Make sure you stock up on paracetamol because that first hangover after seventy day, eighty days will uh, will hurt. <laughs> yeah, half mar half marathon and first drink in seventy five days will be yeah, uh, it'll be interesting. Um, well, look, James, thank you, mate. Pre I really appreciate you taking the time out. Um, I know you, you you must be busy scrambling around. You've got loads going on, so appreciate you giving um giving your words of wisdom. What? If anyone in, who's listening does want to reach out to you and ask for a little bit more, get some more insight on what you're seeing, if they're hiring or they're a candidate, are you open for a conversation with anyone? Yeah, at this abso time? Absolutely, mate. And look, even if I can't help people, I've been making a real point of replying to every single person who's messaged me. Mm. Uh, I think that's really important. If I can't help them, you know, just kind of advising them on what to do. But yeah, for certainly any client who's looking to hire and any you know candidate who who is you know, doing decent numbers, I'm really keen to speak to, of course. Uh, Awesome. so thank you awesome mate thank you very much guys i hope you enjoyed today's episode um as always if you do enjoy it do me one favor share the episode i don't ask you to pay me any money to listen but i do ask you to share with someone you think would benefit from hearing these uh these pockets of information every day um i'll be back again tomorrow with more uh insights and news from around the world but in, in the meantime you stay safe and i will see you all very soon